It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. If you didn't catch Tuesday's episode with Connie, I highly recommend going back and listening to it because it's just such a beautiful, pure way of honoring where you are financially. We're not shaming it. We're not bashing it. We're not saying we could have, we should have. No, it's really just about honoring. This is where I'm starting today. And I think that that is so profound to give yourself the space to say, hey, you know what? Maybe it's not perfect, but that's okay. Today is an opportunity for me to make some shifts and build a healthy relationship with my money. Before we get into the undoing, I want to make sure that you got the news that the Gutsy Podcast is back to a weekly show. Hour-long episodes with incredible, knowledgeable guests from around the world every Tuesday and a power back episode that piggybacks right off of that topic every Thursday. And as you're getting into these episodes, as you're starting to make these shifts, and you feel like, you know what, I could really just use a little bit of guidance or support, I would love to have the opportunity to be that support for you. I'm an alignment coach, and watching you get into alignment and come alive and feel amazing in your life and your business brings me so much joy. I believe that before you're a business owner, you're a human, and you have human feelings and experiences. And when we can shift things on the human level, the things that you achieve in your business literally become limitless. So if you want to chat and see if we're a good fit, go to lauraora.com, schedule a complimentary discovery call. We'll chat for 30 minutes. If I can help you, amazing. And if I can't, I promise to always lead you on to your next success. I'm guessing that you are tuning in today because you are ready to make some shifts with your money. Perhaps you haven't really looked at your numbers lately, and you're ready to take that leap. Maybe you feel a little bit of shame around where you currently are in your business. Or maybe you're just here because you're like, I just really never know what Laura is going to say, and I'm here for it, which is a valid point. (laughs) But regardless of why you are listening to the show, I want you to know that where you are today is okay. If your numbers don't look the way you want them to, if you don't understand them to the depths that you feel like you should, you know how I feel about the word should, please know that this is a judgment-free zone and every shift starts with small changes. Today's episode is about building a healthier habit, about acknowledging where you are today, about saying, you know what, maybe I didn't know then, but maybe today's a chance for me to know now. It's a belief that says, you know what, I know that I'm capable of more. And to get to where I know that I can be, I am willing to invest my time and energy in getting to know my numbers on a deeper level. So first, as you begin to undo this old habit of hiding from your numbers, and what I mean by that is out of sight is out of mind. Um, I kind of squint when I pull up the bank account every couple of months. I couldn't tell you how much is actually in my account because I don't track my expenses or my income. Hiding can also mean not really understanding where your income is coming from and what services are performing well and which ones are not doing well. Basically, hiding from your numbers means you're not looking at them. (laughs) I spent a ridiculous amount of years hiding from my money. Why? Because one, I had old money trauma that always surfaced, and two, I convinced myself for the better part of a decade that because I was a creative, I was not a numbers person. I felt like it had to be technical and I needed to know formulas and all these like tax laws and stuff. No, knowing your numbers is simply being knowledgeable about where you are financially. It's knowing what income is coming in and when. It's knowing what all of your expenses are and where your reoccurring invoices are. It's knowing how much does it cost me to do business. It's having a decent accounting system. I mean, and I say decent because, my friend, it can be an Excel sheet. If that's where you are today, start with an Excel sheet. It's knowing how much money is actually in the bank on a regular basis and reconciling your account, meaning, yeah, these things came out 
And these things came in. And yes, bank, what you have on the record is also what I have. I will tell you if you are not currently looking at your numbers, digging into this at first might feel a little bit overwhelming. So I just want to preface that so that when you go to do this, you're not just like, <gasps> like, like hyperventilating and saying, Laura, why did you make me do this? But I also want you to know that it is safe because there is power in knowledge. And that's what you're giving yourself by looking at your numbers. You're literally giving your power back to yourself because you're empowering yourself with knowledge, with know-how, with data. Because when your business is healthy and you know why it is, or maybe in this moment isn't, then it gives you the power to know what steps you need to do next. If it's not in a healthy place right now, now we know where all of our money is going and where we might need to temporarily trim something or which service maybe we need to start promoting again today. If business is going really well and you can project out your numbers, you can say, yeah, I can buy that new Mac next month. Yes, I can take that vacation because I know that money is coming in. See, money doesn't have to be scary. I know the world has taught us that it should be. I know the world has taught women particularly that like we should just stay out of sight, out of mind with our money and no, we don't need to be in charge of it. And it, that's like for dudes. I would ask you to hold my coffee while I put two giant middle fingers up in the air at that. One of the best ways you can contribute to women empowerment in finances is to know your numbers, to be educated about what's going on financially with your business, and then making sound decisions to grow and expand in a way that impacts the people around you. So here's what I recommend. Create a money day. And I know I've talked about this before, but this has had such profound impact on me and my relationship with money. It also gives you a chance to grow the muscle. You know, if you've never done this before, it's not just going to come like simplistically and easily overnight, unless it does, and then kudos to you. But having one day every week where you invest an hour or two looking at your money, paying bills, taking care of things, it puts you in the driver's seat. Each week gets a little bit easier. Every number you start to understand a little bit more. Each week it takes you a little less time to do it. And before you know it, you've created a new healthy habit. So pick one day each week where you can dedicate uninterrupted time as much as possible because we know that life and kids and things happen. Grab any receipts from purchases from the week, pull together any emails from invoices or membership dues that need to be paid. If it happens to be the time of month to reconcile the account, grab your statements. Basically anything that has to do with finance from that week. Side note, as you get invoices from vendors or subscription updates or things that need to be paid throughout the week, create a folder in your email. This has worked really well for me, so I'm going to share it with you in case it helps you as well. Create a folder in your email called finances. I put one underscore finances because it puts it to the top and it's pretty important. And throughout the week, as I get those invoices or things that need paid or things that need mapped out, you know, in my future finances, instead of having this like, oh, I need to handle this right now. Oh, I need to do this right now. Like whack-a-mole syndrome. I look at it. I acknowledge it. I'm like, there's an invoice that needs paid. I will put this in my finance folder and I will take care of it on my money day. I promise it shifts the entire energy around how quickly you have to pay something and it takes all this like like gnarly energy out of it. And during your money day, you can open that folder. So you have all of the assets that you need. And at that point, you can sit down and put it in whatever accounting software that you use or spreadsheet that you're building and you get to look at it. Notice how I say you get to look at it. That's a big shift when you're talking about your numbers. Remember, numbers are power. Knowledge is power. And getting to know your numbers today and creating a healthy relationship with it puts so much knowledge and power back in your hands. If you're on this money drive and you're like, oh yes, I'm ready to do this. Next week's episode of the Gutsy Podcast is about creating and maintaining a profitable business. 
yes, you can make a shit ton of money and not be profitable. You can also make less money and be insanely profitable. The trick is understanding the difference between the two. Remember to come over to TikTok if you have some fun over there and you want to learn more about business and like ongoing coaching nuggets of wisdom. I'm at that Laura Aura. As always, until I see you next time, stay up safe.